been almost two weeks since my last video. And it has been rough. Peekaboo is safe and sound. It's not like she has anything of value in her anyway. So now I have to start building out the van and insulating it or something, do something. Because I'm losing my mind if I don't. I've decided to just go down to my friend's house, start doing the van, and then we'll drive back when she's ready to buy Peekaboo. And that's just how it's gonna have to be because it's gonna be way too cold here for me to be in an empty tin can. This van has absolutely no insulation. Where I'm going, it's gonna be a little bit warmer. It's still gonna be freezing. That's what we're gonna tackle today. And then we'll come back on Tuesday or whenever she gets the money. That moon is huge. I never remember the moon being that big. Does anyone else remember the moon ever being that big? No, me neither. It's massive. I've arrived at my friend's house. It's super windy here today, so I don't know how I'm going to record things because my mic is just awful. I've emptied out the van, now we get to work. And because it's just me building and I don't have any help, it's going to be like, you're gonna see pieces and, and bits, but I can't film the whole thing while I'm doing it. So I'm gonna try and show you guys as much as I can. This is what's happening so far. So there was a big bench seat here. It's now somewhere out there. This whole paneling, is screwed on. So right now I'm just undoing all the screws. I've taken off this seatbelt thing. Unfortunately, I have to get under the van and have somebody help me and hold the nut that's under there because this bolt has a nut underneath. So if I could just turn it forever and it's never gonna come off. There's also the same thing going on with that one. I need to figure out what I'm doing with my bed. So right now we're just pulling off this paneling. I think it runs the whole length of the van. That thing we're gonna take out. There's also a heater under the bed. That like cage looking thing that's coming out. Then we'll have an empty shell, start framing it and put some insulation in. Got the poles out. We're getting the screws out on this side now. And Sparrow has made a friend. Her name is Dana. She is a Great Dane puppy and I think they like each other. Um, but she is completely deaf. She can, she can uh, see and she can smell, but she's pretty much deaf. You can call, you can, doesn't matter. She doesn't respond. But look at her eyes. <gasps> I can't, I can't get her attention. There we go. She's beautiful. I'm handsome. Yes, you're very handsome, Sparrow Dog. Okay, I'm taking a chip break. This is really good. Where's my garlic? I'm, like, I'm gonna eat that whole bag. I ran into my first major snafu. There's this heater here, right? This little black box right there. I thought they were air hoses that went into it and out of it. Turns out they're coolant lines. You can't just remove them, drain the coolant, and then use the heat up front. Also, there's this monstrosity, which is the AC. And I'm pretty sure there's coolant lines going to that too. Not only do I need to take those out, but before I can do that, I have to drain the hoses that come in and out of them. So there's a valve up front somewhere that I have no idea where it is and it will stop the flow from the radiator to these two things without a closed loop of that coolant fluid the rest of the heat won't work in the van and it'll just spew radiator fluid everywhere i kind of need the heat up front but i don't care about the heat in the back because with everything built in it's going to be so much tight space that the front heat will do enough while we're driving anyway for when i'm parked i have an off-grid heater i unhooked these hoses and they're pretty dry rotted on there. They're dry rotted around the base too. And the hoses go under the van instead of like along the side, like most buses. Or maybe they don't, maybe they go through that wall over there. We're gonna figure it out. I just contacted a local in the area who's like a mobile mechanic and I'm gonna see, pretty sure it's something he can do. We're gonna see if this guy can do it and how much it's gonna cost. Otherwise, I don't know how to do that. My friends uh, might, there's still stuff I can do in the meantime. Uh, it's just kind of a waiting game. I called like, four mechanics telling them the situation about this monstrosity of an AC and then the bus heater in the back. Like, there's apparently some valve in the front that you just close the valve and then you can disconnect these two things and drain out the coolant from these these lines. And then you close the line so that the coolant can return back to the radiator and then you turn on the valve again. So like it's a closed loop system again. Plot twist, there's no valve in this bus van modification. 
It's really not that complicated. Oh, but it is. Everyone I talk to is like, oh, no, 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 I can't do it. Started calling auto repair shops and they're just like, oh, I, I, I know. They're panicking. Like, oh, that's a, that, you got to call an RV repair shop. It's not an RV, but nobody wants to do it. All the RV places are like, oh, I don't know. I, I don't. They're not even listening to the words that are coming to my mouth. The second I say air conditioning unit, they're like, oh, I'm just stop you right there. I, I can't help you. So now we're just stuck. We found someone in Flagstaff who might be able to do it while we're up there selling the van again. I'm kind of at a standstill right now. It's going to get done. Time and money. The universe is a jerk. <laughs> it's just the way it is. The problem is, is there's like electrical and I don't really know how the big thing works. And like the only way to find out how it works is to go to the bus dealership who installs these kind of things all the time anyway. If I take it apart and realize I can't have heat and AC in the front because I messed it up, huge problem. I need someone to do it properly, and that's not something I'm comfortable doing myself. <laughs> so down here, there's all these hoses. And you can see, one of them even says AC hose. So I'm thinking the coolant goes through there. But we need to close the loop, so there needs to be like an elbow to just join them together so that any coolant that flows through there is going to flow back. I'm in the midst of editing and I realized I haven't really explained what's going on with that. And I will, so stick around to the end of the video because it got a lot more complicated than we could ever imagine. What are you doing? I'm sitting on you, Mom. Why are you on top of me? Because I love you and I'm hungry. Okay, well, this is uncomfortable. If it looks like I've been crying, it's because I have. I've just been hitting every roadblock there possibly could be, um, even though I prepared for as many of them as possible and did the research and did the measurements and all that. Beyond all the roadblocks, there's one thing I can do, and that is install the kill mat. Kill mat is this, this is off-brand kill mat. It's sound deadening specifically for automobiles, vehicles. It can be used as insulation, but this really isn't gonna be that insulative because you see how skinny it is? What it does is it deadens the sound from road noise. It kind of insulates it for just, just audio. You basically just put, I put a couple black pieces within here on the outside metal of the van. And it is self-adhesive. You just peel off the yellow peeling stuff. It just comes right off. Then you stick your patches right to like the wheel well is a good place to put it up against the back, the metal that's outside. And it just absorbs some of that vibration and metal sound that you hear when you're going down the road it just is very rattly and it's nice to have a peaceful quiet ride sometimes i'm putting in some kill mat before i put in any insulation which is another nightmare that i'm not going to get into right now and i figured i'd show you how i'm doing that you do want to clean it with alcohol first so i've given most of the van a good wipe down there obviously i haven't gotten to this area yet you can see all the dust over there then after you give it a good wipe down you wipe it down again with alcohol just so it's super super crystal clean then you can stick your kill mat to it so here we go well i'm gonna cut this panel it's really hard to do this one-handed and my tripod is nowhere to be found because everything i need just disappeared apparently um overnight there we have a, a cut piece now we're gonna peel this little backing off of it and this is where i'm gonna stick it but i've already cleaned this with vinegar and water and then i've cleaned it again with rubbing alcohol wipes. These are not doing the greatest job. I don't suggest using these because they dried out and it was all they had left in the store for alcohol. So and we're gonna peel this off, try not to get as much dog hair on it as possible. And then one handed, I'm gonna just stick this right on the metal. And it, it doesn't have to go on perfect. Nobody's gonna see it. Nobody cares. It's not for looks. It's just to absorb vibration. Now, some people do the whole thing like that. I'm not doing that. This is cheap van life, remember? And one of these sheets, which is about a foot and a half squared, those, those, that's a full size sheet. You can buy a box of them, but each one individually is $15. So I bought three of them and I'm just doing patches in the most vibration places. Like I have one on this wheel well, and then on the other one as well behind me, which is covered by just everything don't don't ask questions and then i'm just doing these little patches on the outside wall i'm probably going to put a couple more over there and then this whole side has been done as well the kill mat situation all right so listen i've done little patches like i said i only bought three sheets 
I'm not like five boxes for the van kind of girl. A, I don't want that much weight because this stuff is heavy. And B, I'm on a budget. So like, we're not gonna do bougie and fancy. We're just doing the best build we can with what we've got. So keep your comments. Please just don't be rude. I don't care if you think you could have done it better. I'm sure there's a million better ways to do things. I'm just showing people that like, you can do it and you don't need to do it fancy and it can be done in other ways. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it will still make a huge difference from the road noise vibration. Plus there's gonna be wood, there's gonna be a build, there's gonna be clothing, like there's there's gonna be so much absorbing sound. So like, this is the bare minimum. No, I didn't roll it out. I think you can hear the wind, but it's been just blowing all day. I can't really work with the polyisofoam. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I wish I had someone who knew what they were doing. You can tell I'm starting to feel defeated here. I don't have anyone. And then came the rain. This is not good. I don't know if this is condensation. Because there's no other rust here. I don't know what this is from. This could be just condensation. I don't know. But it's leaking. There's a leak in the van and I don't know where it's coming from. It's not on the inside. And there's no like rust in there. So, I don't know if this is condensation because I have the heat on. Are you kidding me? Well, this is how I'm dealing with it right now. All I can do is like shove a towel in there. It's already dripping out. It's already dripping out. You gotta be sh me, stop! Come on, what the f I just put this bowl there and look at how fast it's filling up. What the hell? It's literally just, it's not dripping, it's literally pouring in! Oh my god. It doesn't make sense, because like, nothing in here is wet. So it's this channel that the door, it's its probably the door seal, but there's nothing I can do about that right now. Look, it's, it's this much full, and that was like five, not even five minutes. It's just pouring in. Look at the amount it's pouring in! I just, I just dumped this out literally 30 seconds ago. That's how fast it's filling up. How am I gonna sleep if I have to keep emptying this out? I can't even work because this is filling up so fast. You can watch how fast this is filling up. Look at this. Unbelievable. I don't know what to do. I'm so f Started coming down here and then pouring out here. And then it stopped. I don't know if it like overflowed something up there. I don't know. But that's already full. It just, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing else shallow enough to fit under there. Like that's bigger. I could cut this down, but if that starts pouring out, then it's just gonna go everywhere, all over the mattress. Top of that, my heater just died. Like it ran out of gas again. I have a brand new tank, but like. The seller of this van told me it had no leaks. I texted him about this and all I heard was crickets. And look, the door's open and it's not, it's still pouring. So it's not the door. I have to like switch out these two bowls and then dump it in this one. But there's also a leak here that hasn't started yet. So now there's a new leak because there's one in front by the door. It's just splashing everywhere. It's completely pointless. I should just let it. I can't leave the van. It's ice cold in here. And now there's this one and this one started up and that one's already full. I... And so is this one. Great. Then in the middle of the night, my heater stopped working completely. The burner tile actually shattered. Little pieces of that porcelain fell out and burnt my rug. It could have killed us. I have nothing to report. Nothing. No progress has been made on the van in days. In days. I'm... I have nothing to report except for negativity. You want me to pretend that life is just bubbly and awesome all the time and I'm not allowed to be negative. But guess what? I'm bunny and beyond and I'm as f 
f***ing real as it gets let you know what really life really looks like in a van and the drawbacks and the bummers and the down times as well as the awesome times and the happy times and the celebratory times if you can't handle the reality of the situation this is reality if you don't like it then don't watch it so the rest of the week has been pretty much limbo waiting for the buyer of peekaboo's money to come through and attempting to problem solve all the things that are going wrong with the van unsuccessfully a friend of a friend came to look at the bus door said he could fix it and then quickly realized he wasn't able to because of time constraints i'm not really sure why he didn't think about that first but good news is he did think that my idea with the sheet metal or plexiglass covering the door and insulating it between was a viable option to repair the door I'll do it myself except for that i don't have any experience and no skill involved in doing this and this is my home i'm investing in so i want it done right so grateful to my friend who has another friend coming to look at it next sunday but right now i'm on the way back up to flagstaff to finalize the sale of peekaboo hopefully as fast as possible because there's already snow on the mountain to see about getting the ac and heater removed at the bus dealership up here and maybe they can fix the leak too i will do my part by assuming the position of co-pilot i really wish i had some good news for you guys i really wish i had like better footage this week but i don't van life just sucks sometimes life sucks sometimes i'm at this truck company they are also a bus dealership so they deal with the bus air conditioning and heating systems all the time it's editing bunny again and i'm finally here to update you on what's really going on with that big air conditioner in the back of the white van it's not something i can do myself i don't really want to dump chemicals all over the place where my friend has a homestead because that's what'll happen. You have to remove those lines and you're gonna dump coolant everywhere. You can have a bucket, but it, you're never gonna get it all in the bucket. And that stuff is toxic to animals and they're all eating off the grass. And, and no, I'm not gonna do that. He seems to think it's a great idea to do it myself. And it is not because thank God I brought it to a bus company instead of taking that advice. Because apparently the way that they modified the white van is that there's no condenser in the front for the air conditioning so they're using the condenser off the air conditioner in the back in order to cool from the front as well i need to leave the air conditioner in there or purchase an entirely new condenser that work alone is three thousand dollars that's before the estimate for the condenser as well so no we're just i guess we're just going to leave the air conditioner in have them remove the heater but the good news is that they're able to repair the leaks they isolated them they found them with hoses and they were able to diagnose exactly where the leaks are and they know how to fix them so that's great that means i can go ahead and start insulating the van i'm glad to be getting the heater out they're going to close the lines and still have a closed loop of coolant so i can use the front heat and the back ac hi editing bunny again i wanted to add that it's going to cost a lot less than $3,000 just to remove the heater and close that lineup as well as fix the leak. We're looking at about 600 instead of three grand. So the part of this that's upsetting though is that that air conditioner is taking up so much headspace and it was where it's where my bed is going to go. And in Peekaboo, which I'm in right now, I have had this thing, which I've constantly hit my head. And so I wanted to make sure that it was not hitting my head on something. I just wanted to have what I've worked so hard for. And it looks as though there's nothing I can do unless I buy a whole new condenser, which would be even upwards of $4,000. That white van is now, I don't want it. It's not what I wanted. It's not what I wanted. And it's ruining the plans that I had for it. And I know I'm gonna keep hitting my head on it. And part of the reason I wanted this van is because I didn't wanna keep bumping my head on things. But I'm super disappointed, really discouraged, and feeling pretty crappy right now. I'm happy the heater, is coming out i'm happy that the leak is going to be fixed that's fantastic and at a fraction of the cost i'm also really happy i brought it to the bus company so that they could figure out the whole condenser thing because when i talked to my friend's friend who was going to work on it locally clueless about that uh, me too so you know um it's nobody's fault it's just i'm glad i took it to the professionals so they knew what was going on but super let down Super discouraging. Not as excited about this new van at all anymore. At all.